Some of you don't even know that. The foundation, where you are living, do you know what they do in the foundation? You don't know, and you are dead. That's why some of you will start business, the business will not work. I pray today that God will prosper you so that you can start a new foundation. You can start your own life and you will finish it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that is why you see the Bible say, Hosea, leave your father's house. Abraham, leave your father's house. Why? There are places you are. Prayers will not be answered. There are congregations you will be. You will just be there. Nothing will happen. Rather, there will be shoo, 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 shoo. Nobody will even say anything to you that will elevate your spirit. I pray today that your eyes be open. Amen. That you will understand how to do spiritual warfare and get what you are looking for. Amen. That's why the church is open. Our church is not Papa Mama Peking. You know Papa Mama Peking? Father, mother, and child. That is not the church. You have to come and call it. I need to be in the presence of God. You come and lie down and say, Father, settle my case. Oh God, there is a you know, that's why I tell you sometimes you don't even need to pick up phone and start calling that person and leave me husband. Leave me husband. No. You are belittling yourself. Take the battle spiritual. Am I talking somebody here? Take the battle spiritual. Call the pastor. I want to be in the church. I need to be going to my office from the church. There is somebody in my office. He calls himself supervisor. His job is to supervise me out of the company. Father, I am in the altar. Every night I'm lying down in the altar. After seven days, I need that supervisor transferred or anyhow deal with him. Amen. And you will see God in You don't even need to see a pastor. You don't need to see a prophet. That energy you use in going to see a pastor and a prophet, use that energy to be in the presence of God. Amen. And when you are in the presence of God, two things you do. Change your mentality. Amen. Many of us, we are still where we are because of our mind. Yes. The blind man that Jesus takes out of the village is his mind that keeps him blind. And the mind of people around. Do you know that Satan is not the worst demon to be, to be dealt with? Satan is not the worst demon to cast out. The worst demon is your mind. I can cast out devil now, but I can't cast out your mind. And that's why the Bible says, renew your mind. Yes. Let this mind be in you. You need to have a different mindset. And when you have a different mindset, God will clothe you with a new glory. Amen. That it doesn't matter what people say, it will not penetrate you. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. I was talking to them in the morning. And I said, you know, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, with due respect, his bulletproof car is not the same with the President of America. Am I talking somebody here? Yes. His own may just be ordinary bulletproof, but American own would be even bombproof. Yes. Yes. So you need to tell the Lord, clothe me with a new glory. Yes. Change my garment. Yes. And when you have a spiritual garment upon your body, you are in a different realm. Yes. What makes people cry will never make you cry. Yes. What makes people shed tears will never make you shed tears. Yes. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. That is the way your boyfriend will behave. You will not even walk out of that. Amen. You know that this is a demon. I'm going to cast it out. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. So you need to understand. And that's why me, myself, it doesn't matter what any person do. It doesn't penetrate me. Amen. It doesn't penetrate me. And that's why today, may you be clothed with a new glory. Amen. So that when you walk out of this place, even if you go home and your boyfriend know you are somebody that always talk and shine your eye like a fish inside the water. Amen. And, and when he's talking, he's waiting for you to start shining your eye and shaking your head. And you just be looking at him. Amen. And when he finish talking, he say, honey, I bought the food for you. Amen. I tell you the truth, he will know you are a different person. Amen. But many of us, a little too penetrate us. A little to enter us. A little, just a little thing. Yeah. Somebody did not greet you because of that, you grow angry. 
somebody look at you with one kind eyes, you now say, I come to that church, the way they are looking at me. You don't even know why they are looking at you. They may be looking at you that you are too pretty. Haven't you think about that? But your mind will tell you they are looking at you and gossiping you. Don't you know that they may be looking at you and saying, this girl is so nice. But if it's a man that is looking at you, you will be smiling. But when your fellow woman look at you, you now feel bad. Heaven help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So what am I trying to say today? Many of us don't allow things to penetrate you. Now, question number one. What is that thing that somebody will tell you that will hurt you so much? What is that? Make up your mind. That that thing you feel that they will tell you that will hurt you so much. And tell it to yourself. First, hurt yourself with it. Immunize yourself with it. And change when they tell you. Have you, been, have you seen prostitutes where they are quarreling? Where a prostitute wants to talk to a normal person. The prostitute knows she's a prostitute. She will tell you, I am a prostitute, but you are a bigger prostitute. Because you know you don't have any other thing to tell she. I pray today that heaven will visit you in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I was preaching there, you know, these people were so religious. But when the power of God moved, Two days later, one of them meet me. I couldn't even make sure. She looked quite different than the way she dressed. I was like, did I meet you already? Did you come to radio? He said, no, you come to our church. I said, are you looking like this? He said, the preaching you preach, open the eyes. <laughs> May your eyes open in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Many of us are suffering today because we are operating on a close range. May you be the light in your family. Amen. People are not seeing because you refuse to shine. Your family are not seeing their way because you refuse to shine. Receive your light of glory. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So there is something Stephen was telling them, apparently testimonies and all that. And suddenly, go ahead and read that place for me. When they heard these things, when they heard these things, they were caught to the heart. They were caught to their heart. And they, they gnashed on him with their teeth. They gnashed on him with their teeth. Number one, what he says penetrates their heart. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah. Yeah. What he says penetrates their heart. Yeah. But they are all repentant people. The worst thing that can happen to you is for you to be talking to an unrepentant person. He will be thinking of what to do to you. Yes. So the Bible said they crush their teeth. In those days in my village, they said that wicked people always grind their teeth. <laughs> so they were so angry. My question today, who is that person that is angry with you? Who is that person that is angry with your family and your business? If I be a man of God, which I know I am, in the next 20 days, they will sleep and never wake up in Jesus' name. Yeah. They are angry. You are telling them the truth, they are angry. You tell them the truth, they are angry. You know there are people that they want you to tell them the truth. But when you tell them the truth, they are angry. You tell them the truth, they start crying. Tell me the truth now. You know, I love it. Tell me now. And when you tell them the truth, they start crying. Some of them, you tell them the truth, they become angry. Yeah. There are some people, you tell the truth, they break your heavy bottle. Yeah. Because that is not what they want to hear. Yeah. May you never be among people that want to hear that, that want to hear the truth in their ear, but in their heart, they don't want to hear it. Amen. <laughs> now, go ahead, please. But he, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Did you hear that? But he, being filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, the problem is not saying the truth. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. There, are, there are some things you need. I'm not telling you to go and start making restitution. I'm not preaching restitution here. For you to go home and tell your boyfriend, do you know I sleep the same way? I sleep with your friend yesterday. You he will break your head. That one, tell God. That one is sin. Confess to God, not to man. Glory to God. So he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And as he was filled with the Holy Ghost, what happened? Looked up steadfastly into heaven. He looked up to heaven. And saw the glory of God. And saw the glory of God. 
you know, when they were about to, when he discovered their faces change, he doesn't look at their face anymore. Jesus, for Jesus to do something for the blind person, he tell him to look up. Amen. This week I urge you, Amen. for one week every day you wake up, just come out and look up and say it's a good day. Amen. Amen. Just come up, look up and say I will succeed today. Amen. He look up and he saw something. He was not looking down. Many of us are looking down on ourselves. Many of us, we are looking up to somebody. Don't look up to any person. David says, I will look up to the hills where I come at my help. He said, my help come up from above. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. There are many of us, we are looking up to our brother in abroad. Instead of looking above, we are looking abroad. Looking for barrel. <laughs> May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. He looked up, being filled with the Holy Ghost. What happened? And Jesus standing on the right hand of He's God. He's seeing the right thing. He looked up and he's seeing Jesus standing at the right hand. Do you know the day I caught the anointing? I was a Catholic. Very strong Catholic family background, strong Catholic. Not ordinary Catholic, Roman Catholic. <laughs> Let's put it in. Catholic. When you are saying Catholic, it's Catholic. Very serious word. That, you know, in, in my place, if you are Catholic, your children must not marry Anglican. They can't. They must marry Catholic. Amen. So, I don't want to go there. But the day I went for crusade, we hear about this great man coming. And this man is old now, he should be like 80 something. Getting to his 90s. When he's talking, people are falling on the mountain. And I said to myself, I will go and see for myself. And when the man was preaching, my mind was not there. I was there not to be, not for myself. I was there to look at what is happening, to know how the opiate is working. Because in those things don't happen in our place, in our own church. And this evangelist is coming with strong and raw anointing. And everybody was talking about him. Reverend Dr. Olopai, 